art makers and art lovers, this is Mina and welcome to my studio. I know I'm a little late this week with the posting, but I am compensating with a video almost twice as long. I hope that is okay with you. So this week we are looking at anatomical differences between some races, three in particular because more would take too long to cover in one video. Alright, let's start with the Asian eye. Let's put some of those things that we learned the previous two weeks to the test. So we want to find our eye shape, the angle of the eye, and perhaps maybe do it around the eyeball. But that's up to you. If you find it easier, by all means do it. You don't have to though. Let's start drawing a bird. Yes, a bird. Because a bird is the closest associative shape to the eye. For some reason that's what my brain is telling me. So we're just trying to get some of that line to be more visible on the screen. Scream? Who's screaming? Hi, scream? <laughs> anyway, so discover some of that eyelid there, but suggest it. It's just an impression first. Work very lightly in the beginning. This is a good way to just be secure with your lines before you press too hard and you stain the paper and then not able to edit yourself later on if necessary. Eyebrow is getting the hang of it. So, what am I doing here? I'm emphasizing the arch, the upper eyelid arch. Why? Because we have something called the epicanthic fold, uh, which is actually a skin fold of the upper eyelid that covers the inner corner of the eye. And it is a common trait in people of Asiatic descent. So what happens is the, the inner corner is quite hidden. So we have some dramatic shadows there. And therefore, we're going to press pretty hard with that charcoal pencil and get that dramatic accent in pretty early in the drawing smooth out the surface but I'm putting very light pressure and remember do that only when you're using a charcoal because doing that with graphite just does not make it very appealing and it doesn't work as well some cleaning up some, some mid-tone shading always have to juggle between the eraser and the pencil because that's the best way to be on top of your values. So we have a little bit more of that slight crease exposed, but that's all a matter of how the lighting falls. Again, some common feature in the Asian races, we hardly have a crease in the upper eyelid, so the shadows will not be as dramatic. In this particular case, we have very little suggested, that it's mainly mid-tones. Good. Some highlight accents. Just give the eyebrow a little more character. So by blending in some of the background, I'm allowing for the eyebrow to have a base where I can accentuate some individual hairs and suggest a direction, but not too much. After you're happy with your eyebrow, do a little more cleanup and perhaps a little more shading where it needs to, and that's it. Moving on to the second one, the African eye. Yes, again, same story. We know how to build our eye shape so far. We know the basics, the eye form, the angle, the eyebrow, situating it lightly in the paper. That way we can erase lines easier if necessary and fix everything in the very beginning before it's too late. So that's the inner corner. And 
and we have the iris quite exposed and we have an upper eyelid that is forming a very deep crease. So far we can see how it contrasts to the eye next to it. So we're starting with a little bit of shading, lightly, but surely. Pretty confidently going into the shading, actually. The shape is pretty straightforward. We have a dark iris. We have a very good definition of the crease in the inner corner of the eye and strong shadows. Back with the eraser and create a little better definition of the inner corner. Some midtones. Start to suggest the eyebrow, its shape, and its value. Again, cross hatching works well for the impression of hair. Smooth out the surface, very lightly and carefully dust over the charcoal. No pressure. Get the eraser to clean up some of the areas that are hit by the light. fix that inner corner because it needs to be raised just a little bit higher. There we go, that's much better. Excuse the sun today, it's been a little bit moody. Doesn't really know if it wants to be light or inconveniently hidden for the making of a drawing video. Coming in with the accents, the accents are not as pronounced, for perhaps you've stained the paper enough after pressing a little too hard with the pencil. Come back and redefine some of the areas around the eye, give the eyebrow a better description. And frame up the eye by hinting a bit of that zygomatic bone. It's really a fancy name for the lateral wall of the eye orbit, or just the outside part of the orbital bone, basically. But again, smooth it all out, the planes break off, but they so need to look like they belong to the same surface. Give the eyebrow a little more character, perhaps clean up some of the lighter areas around the sclera and highlight the accent. And just put a few more eyelashes there as the finishing touches. And with this we wrap it up. And moving to the third, the Native American. 
Now, to be fair, this eye may belong to someone of a mixed race. However, even if part Native American, I found it to be a great example that contributes to an intro of a wide range of types of eyes. So, as we know, we need to establish our eye base first. And in this particular case, the eye is quite angular and rather geometric in shape. So, that makes for an easier sketch. We have the eyebrow, which is set very low, almost touching the upper eyelid. And we start to introduce some shading. A bit of a cast shadow that's dropped by the eyelid. Now, as we can see, the inner corner or the tear duct of this particular eye is very exposed, as well as part of the upper eyelid on the inside. However, as we move along the outer corner, we have the lid fully covered by a layer of skin, and so we're observing the so-called hooded eye. Introduce a few more mid-tones, start to develop the planes around the eye. Smooth out the surface, put very little pressure, as little as possible. You don't want to erase the lines so much as carry the charcoal that sits on the surface around and smooth out the texture. some highlights. The reflection is very important is to bring life to the eye and subtly place eyelashes. In this case they're pointing downwards. Try to place your tear duct and put a little more work into it. Develop the eyebrow. Again, suggestive hair patches. We don't want to put too much attention to each individual hair, as that would take too long and it would be unnecessary. Unless you're going for a hyper-realistic depiction, which in this case we're not. We're going for an impression. Work a little more on the infraorbital margin. Oh, there, Amina. Careful with the fancy term tossing there. Really, it's just the space under the eye that gives our bad sleeping habits away, usually. Traitor. Assess your drawing, see what needs more attention, and try and focus on that. Give the tear duct a little more character, perhaps a few few dotted lines are all it needs. Also, you may be getting a little too deep into the weeds there. So, try and move on quickly, because we are taking way too long for the making of this video. It was magical. So nice when things are happening around the eye without my finger being responsible for it. There you go. And the finishing touches. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this lesson of how to draw the eye. My lesson was how not to make a video that is too long when you have a set schedule. So I hope I learned that. And I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.